Hello friends, this video on p-block elements part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about the ionization enthalpy. So ionization enthalpy, uh, if you see these are the values we have posted. Ionization enthalpy as I told is nothing but the amount of energy required to plug one electron. Correct? From Na to Na plus. So if you see the amount of energy required, this is all amount of energy required. So it is plus. So this is increasing because more and more amount of energy is required. If you talk about the sodium, which is not in this group, but in the, the S group, sodium has tendency to become N plus easily because it's more stable. So less energy will be required in that case. But if you talk about Fluorine, for example, in this case, fluorine is uh, talk about the fluorine one s two two s two two p five, right? So fluorine outermost cell has seven electrons, so it needs one electron to become stable. So fluorine to fluorine minus will become very easy. But if you are taking telling fluorine to give me one electron. Fluorine will not do it because fluorine is almost stable. It just needs one electron to become stable. Stable is eight electron, the full filled uh, state, and also half filled is stable. So anyway, I'll not discuss much again. We have discussed this in the previous videos, so you can watch that. So fluorine just needs one electron to become stable. So fluorine will not like to give one electron back. So you need really, you know, you need to really provide very very high energy to pluck one electron from fluorine. Similarly, noble gases, they are happy, they are noble, they are stable, right? They are stable, they don't want any kind of transactions now as far as electron is concerned. They are very happy in their life. They won't give electron, they won't take electron. So in this case, the ionization enthalpy is all the more high. But if you talk about boron, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Right? So in case of boron, it has three electrons. So either it, ne it needs five electron to be happy, right? boron has outermost three electrons. So it needs either five electrons to be happy or it can give three electrons to be happy. So it, it can give, right? it, can, it can give. So it needs only 800 uh, my kilojoules of energy to uh, give one electron. So that, that, that's the math, it is, right? They, everybody wants to be happy. So my neon is already happy. It won't give electron. You need really need very high energy to convince neon to give an electron. Similarly, fluorine, it won't give electron. You really need high energy to convince fluorine to give electron. But boron, you can easily convince boron because if boron gives three electron, boron will become happy. So you can easily convince. But if you talk, and if you go down the group also, the ionization enthalpy decreases because since the group is uh, size is more size is more right it is easy to pluck electron what we're talking about is plucking electron right if you talk, if you talk from let's suppose you go from uh, carbon right if you go down so carbon the size is less difficult to pluck electron if you go to silicon size is little more easy to pluck electron germanium size is all the more all the more easy to pluck electron the trend continues as you go down the group. Correct. The next is the electron gain enthalpy. So electron gain enthalpy, as I told, is the amount of energy released when isolated gaseous item accepts one electron to become gaseous ion. For example, chlorine will become Cl minus. Right? So it will take one electron. It is about taking electron. It is not giving electron. So in this case, if you see, most of the cases the value is negative. That means they give energy when they accept electron. But some case, for example, if you talk about this, uh, my noble gas, the value is positive. That means you need energy to make them accept electron. See, fluorine has the highest negative value. That means the fluorine gives the maximum energy back. Why? Because or all these values, all these uh, halogens. I'm, I'm comparing this now first. Right? I'm going from left to right. So if you go from left to right, if you see, if you talk about oxygen, right, oxygen, if you give one electron, 
oxygen has now six valence electron in the outermost cell oxygen gets seven but if you oxygen lose one more electron oxygen gets eight valence electron right oxygen gains one more electron oxygen gets eight valence electron and it is very happy so oxygen has a reason to lose electron so if you see oxygen lose electron and gives this much energy but the energy is less why because after giving one electron it is not very much stable it has to lose one more electron to become stable but if you talk about fluorine fluorine it has seven valence electron right now the moment it gives one electron it becomes it has eight valence electron it's a very very stable state so fluorine will give emit more energy to go from f to f minus but if you see the nitrogen has the plus 31 why nitrogen if you see the nitrogen nitrogen has how many nitrogen has five valence electron correct but if you talk about the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p3 so if you see this outermost is half filled half filled means it is stable it was stable right so if you if it accepts one electron it becomes 2p4 that is not much stable that is not half filled because half filled also gives extra stability so nitrogen will not have tendency to lose electron or to gain electron right so in that case electron gain enthalpy is positive so there are so many factors which decide that you can just uh, i recommend you to pause this video and just see all the values of uh, electron gain enthalpy and just visualize why it is so why carbon gives so much energy when it loses electron why nitrogen doesn't give maybe the nitrogen has extra stability right and if you go down the group if you see if you go down the group also if you see the amount of energy emitted is less why because the size of electron has increased right nobody is bothering much if you're adding electron or if you're gaining electron if for example here also fluorine chlorine uh, uh, bromine iodine right this case is different chlorine gives all the more higher uh, i mean it emits more energy when the chlorine becomes cl minus but if you talk about the bromine little less iodine all the more less but if you talk about the noble gas these values are all positive why because when they are noble gas they are happy in their life they don't want electron they don't want to lose electron right they don't want an electron extra electron if you give them they become unstable they are happy with their stable configuration so they have a positive electron gain enthalpy this is a typical trend right so if you see i have noted down the group 15 nitrogen has low electron gain enthalpy this one because it has half filled valence orbital and noble gas has zero i won't say zero it has positive electron gain enthalpy you see right it has all positive electron gain enthalpy why because they are happy in their life the next trend is the electronegativity right so if you see the electronegativity trend the electronegativity increase from left to right you see this is boron is 2.4 2.55 3 3.4 3.9 and it increased why why did the electronegativity increase see electronegativity is what the tendency to attract electrons right so if it is smaller in size and if it has more power here the nucleus it can attract electron more for example if you see boron will not be able to attract electron but if you talk about this fluorine it will be able to attract electron because fluorine is atom is more charged more positively charged and this whole thing is small so even if electron is here it will pluck easily but if it in this case even if electron is here in the same distance it will not be able to pluck why because the boron size itself is big first plus it, it doesn't have much positive charge in the nucleus but in this case even if it is here it has so much positive charge in the nucleus it will attract the electron so electronegativity is nothing but tendency to attract electron so if you go from left to right the size decrease and also the atomic uh, if you see the atomic structure the nucleus has more positive charge so right the, the capacity to attract external electron increase so the electronegativity negativity increase when you go from left to right same thing if you go from top to bottom the electronegativity decrease why the atomic size is more 
and the tendency to attract electron is less. Right, it's all about tendency to attract electron. I'll not discuss uh, in detail. Anyway, we have discussed this in the previous chapter or in the trends, periodic table trend. You can watch that video to understand this in more detail. Right, so as I told, electron negativity is nothing but tendency of atom to pull shared pair of electron towards itself. And for that, it needs the, the two things that favors is the first thing is the small size of the electron, sorry, the small size of the atom. And the second is high positive charge in the nucleus of the atom. You see, it depends on the atomic size and electron hunger. Right? Two things. See, fluorine is all the more electronegative because fluorine is, uh, fluorine wants one more electron to become more stable. So it's all the electron hungerness and the capacity to attract electron. That depends on the size of electron and my, uh, what do you call, the, the positive charge in the nucleus. And in this case, the aluminium and silicon breaks the trend somewhere. So if you go down, see if you see this decreased and there is an increase here. Similarly, this decreased and this increased here. So they generally break the trend in this P block levels. The metallic character again, the same thing. If you go from uh, left to right and in this fashion from bottom to top, the non-metallic character increases. So if you see here, uh, these uh, values are uh, my metals, these are my metals. The grey, uh, brown one is my metal, metalloids and apart from these, these are my non-metals. Right, this is my non metal, this is my metal, and these are the metalloids. Correct, so from metal to non metal, you go from here to here metal, metalloids, non metal. Correct. Now we'll talk about the oxidation states. So, if you see, uh, the oxidation state, as I told, the group 13 maximum oxidation is plus 3, group 14 plus 4. So, if you want to find the maximum oxidation state, so you say group number minus 10. 13 maximum oxidation is 3, 14 maximum oxidation is plus 4, 15 plus 5, 16 plus 6, 17 plus 7, and 18 is plus 8. Okay, and please note we have both positive and negative oxidation state. You will see there's a negative oxidation state, there's a positive oxidation state. We'll discuss about these things. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.